Hello, I'm Elizabeth Bramson Boudreau, CEO and publisher of MIT Technology Review. This conversation is a snapshot of three women leading the research in their organizations with a goal to build intelligence into everyday devices and machines so that the user can make decisions faster and smarter anytime with or without internet access anywhere. So I wanna dive right in by introducing Zara Kuchak, who is an engineer at Qualcomm. Zara, tell us about what you're working on. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Zara Kuchak. I'm staff machine learning engineer in Qualcomm AI research. I received my PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford University. In Qualcomm, I'm part of a team that works on model efficiency. We focus on researching different techniques to run machine learning models more efficient on edge devices, requiring less computational power, less memory while preserving the battery's life. In Qualcomm AI research, we do fundamental and applied research. The results of our studies published in top tier machine learning journals such as NIPS and ICML. Our mission in Qualcomm is doing innovative artificial intelligence and bring it to wireless technology. Now I'd like to introduce Aaron Gustafson, who is a lead data scientist at Duolingo. Aaron, please tell us about your work at Duolingo. Sure, I'm really happy to be here. So I'm Aaron, I'm a data scientist at Duolingo where I've been for a little over three years now. Um, I joined Duolingo after completing my PhD in linguistics. Um, my research during my PhD focused on uh, studying bilinguals, so I couldn't have uh, found a better place to end up to start my career. Um, Duolingo's mission is a big part of what drew me to the company. Our mission is to develop the best education in the world and make it universally available. So accessibility and equity in education are core to everything we do. And we see AI as playing a really important role in helping us scale high quality education and helping us level the playing field for all of our learners. My work at Duolingo focuses on learning assessment and uh, this plays a, a core role in sort of a, uh, accomplishing and achieving our mission. Uh, the, the team that I help lead works on building new and innovative methods for assessing learning within our app. Um, and one, of, one example of the type of data science work that we do on this team um, is to quantify and analyze learners' behavior within our app and then correlate that behavior with learning outcomes uh, as measured by the assessments that we develop. And the insights from these analyses have been really useful in helping us identify opportunities for improving the learning experience on our product. And this has been really critical for making sure that we're teaching the right way for all of our learners, which helps us achieve our mission. And finally, uh, I'd like to welcome Megan Daga, who is the Director of Product Management for AI at Qualcomm. Mega, please talk to us about your work to enable on-device AI applications. Yes. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi, this is Megha Daga here. I'm the Director of Product Management at Qualcomm, and I come from the IoT Business Unit at Qualcomm. AI in current scenarios is something which we are using every now and then, everywhere in our life. We start from conversational voice assistants, uh, we have smart cameras, we take smart pictures and enhance them, and all that is enabled through AI. Qualcomm is a leader in this area by being omnipresent in all different scenarios where AI is enabling all these different features, be it on the mobile phones or in AR, VR, in surveillance, in automotives, in smart buildings and connected cameras. Uh, we uh, believe in providing the specialized embedded processors that can enable AI at the edge in a seamless, easy, power efficient manner. We also provide the specialized software tools that can sit with these embedded platforms and provide the best solutions and help our ecosystem partners develop. Great, thank you. So Aaron, let's come back to you in Duolingo. Uh, it's an app, you have millions of users. I know it quite well. It's tremendously uh, valuable and effective and, I, and also very fun to use. Uh, AI is the engine that enables the experience uh, that drives uh, that drives Duolingo. What can you tell us? What is most vital to the user when it comes to enabling 
the intelligence at the edge on the device. Can you talk to us a little bit about the priorities for Duolingo when it comes to that kind of enabling technology? Yeah, so you know, we have AI uh, throughout the product and I, I think it, um, you know, what the user expects, it kind of shows up in a, in a few different ways. So one of the more powerful ways I think that we're using AI right now is for creating a personalized learning experience. And I think that's something that our users really do expect. They want an experience that sort of meets them where they are with, you know, the language that they, they're learning. If they already had experience with that language, they, you know, want us to kind of take that into account when we're designing the curriculum for them. Um, so AI is a way that we sort of do this personalization at scale. And it's one of the key ways too, that we are trying to break down barriers for education and making sure that, you know, what we provide is high quality for everybody. Uh, members of our learning AI lab have been working on a system for the last year or so that we've affectionately named Bird Brain as a, a nod to our um, owl mascot duo. Um, and this system models not only uh, how difficult individual exercises are that our learners are seeing, but it also gives us an estimate of how proficient uh, the learners are in the language that they're studying with us. Um, this system updates every day um, using the roughly half a billion exercises that users completed the day before as training data. And BirdBrain right now is helping us personalize more than 15% of the lessons that our users see every day, that they complete every day. Um, and the, the personalization that we provide is customization on an individual learner level for how difficult a particular lesson is likely to be. And the way that we do this is by balancing the um, expected difficulty of a particular exercise with how proficient we think the learner is. And this lets us kind of get in the Goldilocks zone for um, how difficult a lesson is. It's not too hard, it's not too easy, and it's just where they need it to be to learn as much as possible and stay engaged. Um, so all of our results so far with uh, using bird brain have been really exciting. Our A-B tests have been pretty successful and we plan to keep scaling this out so that we can give users more and more personalized experiences. Thank you, Erin. Uh, you, you've raised a bunch of questions for me about uh, the applicability of this for other types of learning um, that isn't only language, uh, that sort of uh, very customized um, lessons that could be help, help anyone advance in any field. Um, to what extent is it, are you all looking at applying this to other types of non-language lessons? That's a great question. Um, you know, we are working on a literacy app right now. Uh, it's targeted at um, teaching reading skills to children, English reading skills in particular. Um, we're still in early stages of development for that product. And so there isn't a lot of AI under the hood yet, but it certainly is a place where we're going to be applying it in the future. Yeah, that's sort of off script, but I was just interested in that anyway. Um, so it's a great case scenario. It's a really great example. Zara, can you give us some insights and share your insights around the AI modeling and what this actually looks like and how we can better understand it? Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm so excited to introduce um, AMIT. AMIT stands for AI Model Efficiency Toolkit. It is an awesome library that Qualcomm um, provides as open source on GitHub. Um, AMIT provides advanced quantization and compression techniques. It's proven that using AMIT, we can run machine learning models faster um, with less memory requirement and computational powers. Um, so basically given um, sample machine learning algorithms, say ResNet50 or any NLP um, models, we can run this model faster on um, edge devices. Wow, so this is exciting. Um, and, and Mega, it's a great opportunity for you to kind of help us bring the hardware and the software together. Can you can you help us understand how, it, how they fit? Yes, uh, for sure. I mean, in the field of AI specifically, the hardware and software is something that needs to go hand in hand. Uh, they are two pieces of the same puzzle and they are designed in a way that they work with each other. 
So it's not like the hardware is designed and the software comes later. It's something the hardware is designed thinking of the software pieces and the software is designed thinking of the hardware pieces. Uh, we at Qualcomm have designed uh, very specialized these embedded processors. The thing where we stand out is through our heterogeneous computing capabilities, uh, which makes this AI at the edge possible in all these scenarios. Uh, in cases of apps like Duolingo, making them work on the edge in the low power efficient mode is something our hardware platforms enable. And they are enabled using the software tools like Zara mentioned, AMET. There are several other tools of the neural networking uh, which come as part of our chipsets, which our uh, ecosystems can take in, leverage them, and deploy their applications or specialized web platforms and get the max out of it. So that's where I think uh, all these pieces come together in enabling the use cases that we see in current, uh, uh, you know, in current scenarios and world uh, to enable them on our chipsets. So it is clear that even given the constraints of space using devices like a smartphone, uh, which all of us have and are ubiquitous today, uh, you can still have a great user experience seamlessly. Duolingo has been uh, you know, put, put out here as a case example. Um, can you each describe some of the biggest challenges that you have uh, confronted in achieving a seamless user experience? Maybe we'll start with you, Zara. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Great question. Um, on edge devices, there are three main challenges. The first one is uh, limited battery life, limited uh, power computation, and limited memory. So using AMIT, Snap, Snappy, uh, we want to shrink complex neural networks in a way to be able to run them faster on edge devices, which has limited memory and limited computational power. But at the same time, we don't want to sacrifice the accuracy of the task. For instance, giving uh, a face detection model or a speech recognition model, we want to run them efficient on edge devices and at the same time, have the same accuracy and precision from the models. And Aaron, how about in the Duolingo world? Yeah, I think a, um, you know, a critical constraint for us when we were thinking about the, the bird brain system um, is really how often do we need to, to update our models and you know, what, what that means for, um, for the user experience. So, for example, um, for our personalization with BirdBrain to be really solid, we need to have an up-to-date sense for what we think our learners know. And so we need to update the model regularly. The question becomes, how, how often does that update need to happen? Does it need to happen after every exercise the, the learner completes? Can we wait until after they finish a lesson? Or can we wait until the end of the day when maybe they've done five or 10 lessons? Um, in the end, we opted for updating daily um, after a lot of experimentation in R&D. And there were some trade-offs here that we needed to make sure were, were worth making. So what we saw in the R&D was that the student weights, so the, the information about how proficient we think they are, stays pretty stable day to day. We do see incremental improvements, but that kind of matches with our theoretical model of how we think learning works. We shouldn't see huge changes from day to day. So because we were able to see that in, in our in our data, um, we felt okay with taking the training offline, updating daily, which allowed us to, to really get BirdBrain up to scale pretty quickly and reduce the complexity of the infrastructure that was needed to sort of get it in front of users. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Mega, what about some other use case examples? What are some other ways that we should be thinking about the value of AI at the edge? Yes, I think uh, one of the biggest changes which the industry is moving towards uh, is uh, things that used to be more from local devices and then cloud computing and more and more AI was moving towards the local devices. Now there is the next trend which we are seeing upcoming is AI at the edge. What that means is the heavy compute, the heavy lifting is coming at the edge, at the local center. Um, the examples which we see these days are, I will go back to the retail use cases I was talking about, where we have hundreds of camera sensors sitting all across and they have to 
to do multiple things, right? I want to do self-checkout. I want to do seamless user experience. I want to do inventory management, all that stuff and maintaining those hundreds of cameras synchronized in a connected way. That's all enabled through AI, and we want to do it at the edge because of several reasons, reasons being privacy, reasons being connectivity, um, to overcome, overcome those challenges of uh, you know, going and processing over to the cloud. We are bringing it onto the edge, but that brings the challenges as well, right? We need to have those devices uh, that can cater to that kind of computing requirements and still stay in the low power efficient mode. Um, and that is where I think the need of uh, these specialized embedded platforms are coming in, uh, platforms which are specially designed, thinking AI into mind, and applications and tools which are designed keeping AI into mind. And these are the challenges which we are overcoming and bringing all together. I want to thank Zara Kuchek and Megan Dega from Qualcomm and Aaron Gustafson from Duolingo for an absolutely great discussion today. We will keep an eye out for all of you and the developments that you drive in your organizations and in your careers. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.